Uh, thank you. So my name is Nicole Bratchford. Um, I work within the Bridge team at Asia Education Foundation and work with my colleague Jessica, who's the program coordinator. Um, so before we get started, um, I would like to acknowledge our traditional custodians of the lands where uh, Jessica and I are both joining from today. Uh, so we're very thankful to be on the land of the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation. And we deeply respect their history and culture and acknowledge their continuing connection to the lands, water and animals. So uh, today's session, um, we'll be taking through uh, the bridge program as a whole. Um, firstly, by giving a bit of background as to what um, AEF is and what the bridge program, um, you know, what what it is essentially um, for all those new coming into the program and um, what outcomes and expectations uh, you should expect um, going into the program. Um, we'll also be looking at the more specific program components and walking you through that. And then finally, at the end, uh, there will be an opportunity to ask some questions. Um, so it, you're welcome to ask the questions uh, throughout the session, otherwise, uh, there'll be a moment at the end. Um, and I would like to make note that the session is being recorded. Um, so this can be used as a research, uh, resource after the fact um, and for those who can't attend. Um, so I'll hand back over to Jessica and um, she can get us started. Thanks, Nicole. Thanks for that great introduction. So I hope that gave a bit of a summary around what we will be doing today. Just a reminder, today is for our Australian schools in the cohort. I know that there's been a large amount of interest from our Indonesian and international based schools in joining today. There will be a specific event for Indonesian schools in the coming weeks where they'll, there's a different application process for our Indonesian and overseas schools. However, today we'll be focused on Australian schools only. As Nicole mentioned, I'm Jessica Stevens. You may have received an email from Nicole or I in the past, but we're really grateful that people are here today, as well as everybody that is watching this after this event, which I know is quite useful for everybody. As a bit of an overview, the AEF stands for the Asia Education Foundation. Sometimes people just abbreviate it to AEF. So if you have any questions, it's us. Within the bridge team, there's three people in Australia and an additional four over in Indonesia. Today, as the event is for Australians only, we have given you a bit of a summary of who the key staff members are in Melbourne. So as you can see there, Hamish Curry is the executive director of the Asia Education Foundation. I'm the coordinator of international education partnerships which Bridge is one of, and I work very closely with Nicole. So if you ever need any questions around the Bridge program or any international education partnership work at the AEF, one of the three of us are the people to come and speak to. However, we work in a really close and creative team who I'm sure you may have already met in through other work that we do. Now, as I mentioned, the Asia Education Foundation runs the Bridge Program. So I'm just gonna let someone in. The AEF's mission and goal and strategy is that it equips educators and students with the intercultural learning and global perspectives to navigate a shared future with Asia Pacific. So just to unpack that, we do work across the Asia Pacific region. Sometimes there's a lot of interest in our Indonesia Bridge program, but as we'll talk about today, we do offer various programs across the Asia Pacific. Now, the AEF has three groups that we focus on. So that's definitely some our equipping educators, which is what the Bridge program is about, enabling youth and engaging advocates. And as you can see in the diagram, we find that there's such an interconnected nature between the areas of work that the AEF does, and it really strives to promote key themes and key objectives such as diversity, collaboration, building networks, having a shared language. These are just, this is just a bit of an overview of the AEF. As I mentioned, 
we are a larger organization and the organization implements the bridge program oh i'm so sorry there we go as I've mentioned here, and as you can see a little bit more clearly, the Asia Education Foundation has an array of program areas. So in the light orange, there's international education partnerships. That is where Bridge sits, as well as the PNG Oz Secondary Schools program, Nexus, which is another school partnership program in development, as well as various study programs. We also have work within professional learning and youth agency and education and almost research. And if you can have, if you can imagine it through this kind of diagram, there's three main components of the AEF and we all work to engage educators and students to grow their intercultural learning through an range of immersive and impactful experiences both virtual and in person when they're safe, connecting across the age Pacific. Just a point before I delve into bridge, which I apologize isn't in that slide. You may have noticed that some of our emails come from the University of Melbourne, just as a bit of an insight, so you're not a little bit confused. The Asia Education Foundation is part of the AsiaLink group, which is based at the University of Melbourne. So that's where our office is and that's where our large, large head office is. But the AEF is the core people that you'll be engaging with. Now, on to Bridge. Um, we have quite a few questions about this. Bridge, what is it? It's an international school partnerships program between students, teachers and school communities. Bridge itself is an acronym and I'll be quizzing people on the next slide. If you know it, go in the chat. But how Bridge works is it's a blended model of teacher professional learning, which includes where possible face-to-face -face, as well as online learning and international programs with your partner school. Through this, Bridge as a program supports teachers to use various technologies and various experiences to open up their classrooms to the world. At its core, we work tirelessly to create engaging and interesting programs. And as a result of that, we're able to partner with an array of high, high level international education and culture and diplomacy and business and STEM based organizations that contribute to the online if possible, but also virtual programs that we run. Bridge, as I mentioned, is a school partnerships program. So it's one-to-one, -one. one school in Australia, let's say one school in India partnering together with various opportunities to undertake professional learning and build your networks. We have to, of course, thank the Australian government through the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade who fund this program. It wouldn't be possible without them and we're very much in their debt. You can see some photos below which highlight some recent activities that we've had in the Bridge program. To the left-hand side is what we call the professional learning program. And that clearly occurred in a pre-COVID time, which was run face-to-face. -face. In the middle is an example of some of our online activities. And to the right is another insight into what the professional learning looks like. Now, I'm just noting the time. We do have a video to show, but we might go through the slides and show that towards the end, because I know it's four o'clock and, we have a lot of educators joining us and I think they might be in, out and ready to go home. As I mentioned before, Bridge is a one-to-one -one school partnerships program. And building on what I said before about teachers undertaking immersive and intensive professional learning programs, as a result of that, partnerships are supported to establish collaborative activities and collaborative plans to outline how it is you want to collaborate. So that's something I really want to get across is bridge support teachers through a range of really high level learning activities to empower the partnership to decide how you want to collaborate, what you want to do, what it is you want to work on. So bridge is very unique in that way in that we the power is with the teachers. We use key terminology and key messaging throughout as well as key frameworks to help guide the professional learning that you do. That includes design thinking, the AEF intercultural learning framework and the 
wealth of experience that we get from our partners when we implement various events. You may be thinking, and I know some people have already sent through questions about what can I do with my partnership? You, it's really up to you. We use this United Nations Sustainable Development Goals as a prompt for people to explore issues of interest for their school communities through collaboration with their partnership. Some people do that on things like environmental importance. That's very popular in our Pacific Island project. Some people do religious and cultural differences, very common in Indonesia. There's work that's being done on student leadership, exchanging pedagogies and classroom management styles, as well as within the arts, STEM, technology, any learning area has the capacity to collaborate creatively. And it's what we do is encourage and support the partnership to be able to do that. As you can see, we incorporate a range of different tech. So that includes VR, video conferencing. And if you can see the image on the right-hand side, that was a live stream event, which we will be incorporating into 2022, just having a bit of a diverse virtual offering. Bridge as a program has a set of pretty um, straightforward objectives and outcomes that we expect the partnerships and the participants to receive and achieve at the end of the program. So Bridge at its core builds teachers professional capability and helps them to develop deeper learning experiences for their students. It helps them to explore new pedagogies, new technologies to explore their classrooms, to open the classrooms to the world. As a result of this, the students are enabled to collaborate on projects across an array of things that they find interesting and important, and of course, develop lifelong friendships within that, that process. It helps to develop people to people links. So that's quite common. Um, in regard to the school community, really building that authentic connection between, let's say, a school in Mataram in Indonesia and a school in Perth in Australia. And it also establishes sustainable school partnerships. So there's a network of events and a network of educators, which helps really contribute to the overall goals of the teacher, as well as the partnership and their students. Now, I know I mentioned it before, BRIDGE is an acronym. It stands for Building Relationships Through Intercultural Dialogue and Growing Engagement. It can be quite word, wordy, which is why I'm sure you can understand we cut out, we commonly call us BRIDGE. In 2021, there's 23 nations that have been part of BRIDGE. And my colleague, Nicole, is gonna talk about the three programs that are available on offer for new intakes of partnerships this year. But just worthwhile saying, Bridge has been established for 12 years, it was first kicked off in 2009. And as you can see here, there's a huge network of teachers that, that are involved in the program through across these 23 nations, across different schools, different experiences. So while you are establishing a one-to-one -one school partnership, there's a real network of learners and network of educators that the Bridge program supports through a range of online events. The last point that I'll say just before I um, hand over to Nicole is there's a quote on the screen that I think really resonated with me and resonates with a lot of people, which is about extending an Australian teacher's practice and understanding of different educational experiences. So Bridge is a two-way learning process. There's so much to be learned from our colleagues in the Pacific, in India, in Indonesia, in South Korea. And that is something that Bridge really promotes is how we learn together and learn from one another. I'm sure you've all had a long day, so I'm not gonna read through all of the stats, but it does rank quite highly, especially in regards to the international education programs. It's incredibly well regarded. And I'll just hand over to Nicole to talk about what is available this year and how that is considerate in, of COVID-19. Great, uh, thank you, Jess. Um, so I'll be taking us through some more of the uh, more specific information around the three bridge programs uh, currently open for application. So that includes the Australia India Bridge, Australia Indonesia Bridge and Australia Pacific Bridge. Um, and so firstly, I'll touch on 
uh, Bridges' response to COVID-19, which um, of course is a, a significant consideration for any school looking to take part in the Bridge program. Uh, so AEF works very closely with the Australian government across all three programs. Uh, to ensure that they are in line with all the travel restrictions and social distancing advice um, regarding COVID-19. Uh, so as you can expect, uh, the programs have shifted uh, to be a more blended and virtual delivery approach uh, with any homestay and school visits uh, in the Indonesia and Pacific Bridge program being postponed to mid 2022 when international travel is more likely to occur and um, given the current context of the India Bridge program uh, it has moved to full virtual delivery and we're incorporating um, the use of virtual tours and creative cultural experiences and to try and replicate um, many aspects of the homestay and school visit components. So uh, moving forward, um, as always, we will continue to be flexible and responsive. Uh, so to ensure the bridge program is delivered in the most risk adverse and safe manner. Now, there's, uh, there's a lot of information on uh, this slide, so bear with me, but I'll um, just to give you an idea of what's included in each of the programs. Um, so I'll start with India Bridge and what that looks like. Uh, so within this program, there will be seven school partnerships. So that's uh, seven schools in Australia and seven schools from India with one teacher participating per school. And so the program will uh, include two professional learning programs uh, delivered virtually. So the uh, part one will be delivered during April, May this year. Uh, with part two in April, uh, sorry, August, September, um, being a series of virtual online workshops. And so all uh, participating schools will receive a, a 360 degree camera to create high quality virtual tours and will receive uh, ongoing support and resources uh, from the bridge team. Um, and this year there will be a reduced school contribution fee of $650. So moving on to the Indonesia Bridge Program, uh, there are 15 school partnership positions available in 2021. Um, of those partnerships, five will be new partnerships with two teachers participating per school and uh, 10 will be existing partnerships uh, who will be nominating one new teacher to be participating in the program. So this uh, will involve a four day training program in Australia and Bridge will cover all uh, domestic transport, accommodation and most meals for that. Um, when international travel is possible and safe to do so, uh, Bridge will cover your return airfares uh, for your seven day school and homestay visit in Indonesia. And as part of this program, there's no contribution um, in order to participate. And lastly, the Australia Pacific Bridge program. So there will be eight partnerships in total participating. And so that's Australian schools partnered with schools in Fiji, Nauru, Solomon Islands, Tuvalu, Kiribati and Vanuatu uh, with one uh, teacher participating uh, per school. And so this program uh, will include a virtual professional learning program um, and return international airfares to your partnering uh, Pacific Island country uh, for a 10 day homestay and school visit when international travel is available. And so um, there's no contribution fee for this program either. Um, so I'll head to the next slide, thank you. Uh, so in terms of the application process, uh, applications for Australian schools will close this Sunday, the 14th of February. Um, and I'll put a link to the application in the chat, but um, alternatively, we have the QR code uh, on the slide, which you can scan to access the application. 
So the application asks an array of personal and professional questions about the nominated teachers um, and school information, uh, as well as questions based on key selection criteria, including uh, your demonstrated capacity to support the establishment um, of the school partnership and motivation of the nominated teacher to lead that school partnership within the school. Um, it also includes uh, the capacity to support a visiting teacher uh, for a homestay and school visit program, if applicable, um, as well as special uh, selection criteria around disability and inclusive education, um, as well as um, some possible areas of collaboration within the partnership, which uh, Jess touched on earlier, giving some suggestions. So to be eligible to apply for the program, um, there's a range of different um, eligibility criteria. Um, specifically for the schools, um, they must agree to the conditions of participating in the program, um, which is linked to in the application. Um, they must nominate one or two teachers, depending on the program, uh, to participate and uh, support their participation in the professional learning program, whether that's virtual or in person, um, and also supporting the home stay and school visit component uh, when international travel is allowed. So um, schools must be able to host their partner teacher at their school um, and arrange appropriate home stay within the school community. Um, and lastly, uh, uh, schools must commit to working collaboratively with their partner school for at least one year um, and have an interest in furthering intercultural understanding and ICT in the school curriculum. So for the nominated teacher um, or teachers, if um, that's the Indonesia uh, school program, um, you must be nominated to lead the bridge partnership and engage with your uh, partner school um, again, if participating in the Indo uh, Indonesia program, um, be able to travel domestically for the four days of professional learning in Australia, um, be able to host your partner in your home or find an alternative host if, not, if you're not possible. Um, you will be able to travel to your partner country when international travel can occur. Um, be committed to working with your partner teacher through online collaborative projects and also be prepared to cover any associated travel cost with your international travel, um, including passports, visas, travel insurance, um, again, pending COVID-19. Um, so that's the conclusion of uh, the information session so far. Um, so we do wanna open it up to um, anyone who's attending, if you have any questions, um, if you don't want your question to be recorded, you're welcome to hold on to them until the end of the session and we'll stop recording um, and you can ask them then. So if you wanted to put your questions in the chat or simply just unmute yourself, we'll be happy to help. And I've just stopped sharing so that we can see one another. Um, does anybody have any questions that you'd like to ask? We're here to answer any big or small questions. Um, so please do raise your hand. Alternatively, you can always put them in the chat or we can answer them after the event. Yeah, of course. Go for it. Can you, can you guys hear me? Yes. Uh, sorry. So my name is Minu Park from Haksa Elementary School in South Korea. Mm -hmm. Actually, you know, I'm sorry to say that my English is not that perfect because in Korea, English is not uh, my mother language is second language, so I'm still studying English. So, so you know, actually, uh, while listening to you guys' presentation, uh, I have some questions, right? You know, speaking of the bridge program, you guys have three different types of bridge program. First one is Australia with Indo India, Indonesia, the Australia and other country. The last one is Australia with other Pacific Asia country, right? So speaking of Pacific country, Korea is also a Pacific country, one of Pacific country, you know. Speaking of me, I'm the teacher uh, belonging from the APEC teacher. In APEC, APEC also has teachers in the uh, union. I'm the teacher the belonging to APEC. So I'm wondering that, well, uh, 
I'm wondering that whether Korean schools are eligible to have this bridge program, partnership program with Australia school? That's a really good question. And yeah. yes, um, it is, does technically can count as a Pacific country because mm -hmm. it's part of APEC. Mm -hmm. We should have classified that Pacific program is more for our Pacific Island based uh -huh. countries. Um, mm -hmm. However, there has been a program with South, South Korea in the past, mm -hmm. I believe it Mm, ended in 2016, if I'm not right, maybe 2017. Um, there has been part of, it has occurred in the past and we are incredibly keen to build it up again. The reason why it's not um, funded this year is because of funding allocation from the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade. So they're um, not funding that program at the moment, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they won't fund it in the future. Mm -hmm. For everyone that is here as a bit of insight, the Melbourne team at the AEF manage all of the applications for the Australian schools, whereas for the international schools that participate, they are generally managed by the um, like the Australian High Commission or in South Korea, it would be the Australian Embassy and or the Australia Korea Foundation. And they do the shortlisting from there and then we match as mm -hmm. kind of professional collaboration. So it's a really good question. And I'm really glad that you're here because we are really keen on getting the programs with South Korea and Japan, as well as um, other nations in the Asia Pacific region, and maybe establishing a future program where we can bring multiple people together. Mm -hmm. Like you probably teach in APEC classes. Yeah, you know, actually, so the reason why I joined this bridge program is that, uh, you know, I'm a teacher working at South Korea, the elementary school. You know, in 2016, I started the online webcam class with one school in Australia located in Bridgman. And 2017 and 2018, I brought around 20 of my students to Australia to have the exchange program. For 15 days, my students stayed the Australian uh, family and study very hard one Australian school. In return, uh, maybe around September or October, using a uh, third term of vacation, 20 of Australian students also visited my school for seven days. Yeah, I'm, I don't live in Seoul, Seoul is capital. I live in Busan. Busan is the second largest city mm -hmm. in Korea. So they were very touched for having this programming. So in 2019, I was supposed to keep going this program, but you know, there's some issue happened in Australian schools. So I couldn't do that. So in 2020, because of COVID-19, I couldn't do that. But you know, even though because of COVID-19, we cannot have this kind of in-person offline program, I had a webcam online class with one and three Malaysia schools. Maybe, mm -hmm. I don't know how many times I had webcam class, more than 20 times I had that program. So I believe, I do believe that uh, amid this pandemic, this kind of bridge program and international exchange program should keep going. So mm. that's why I'm looking for one Australian school using bridge program to start this kind of webcam class with my school. So I can guarantee the program will be very nice. They, it doesn't cost anything. If school has the webcam, it that's all. Mm. So my school already set up everything. So that's why I'm wondering whether would it be possible to uh, find out one Australian school which is interested in having this kind of online class with my school. You know, according to you guys, PPT, after the travel is possible, then the bridge program is also possible with offline program like visiting each other mm -hmm. and hosting teacher and inviting teacher. So my that, school will yeah. be possible to do that. Yeah, that's really good. Thank you for that background. Um, and before I forget, your English is fantastic. I'm sorry, there yeah, was I'm no sorry. need to say that over. You. you guys flatter me. Yeah, right. It's great. Um, thank you for explaining that you have been part of the bridge program. So that's a really good um, example for everybody else that's here. Mm -hmm. Sometimes um, as a result of COVID or changing schools, sometimes um, a partnership can have a whole lot of momentum and then it has, goes up and down as it rolls along. Um, what I will maybe move 
we might reach out to you directly. If you wanted to put your email, if you're happy, you so either in the chat, what we'll so do is that, yeah. find an Australian school that has participated in the past because that is exactly what people should be doing this year yep. and, into, and moving forward. Um, yes. Having those kinds of online webinars is exactly what we want. So um, I'm not sure if you're able to maybe, do you know how to use the Zoom messaging Yes, yeah. so I can I can type my email right oh, now. Yeah. If you don't want to put it publicly, oh thanks. Okay, well that's easy. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah. Um, we'll reach out to you, Nicole. My colleague will note it down, and then we'll be able to send through that. Thanks so yeah. much. I yeah. know there's another question here. If you wouldn't mind, Minwoo, that I can just pass over to Annie. Would you like to ask the question, or are you happy for me to respond via um, me just reading it aloud? Oh, I'm I'm happy to speak to it. Of course. Um, yep. We've got um, uh, a, one of the teachers that teaches Indonesian in our school. She also teaches at another school, and we were looking at perhaps doing a joint application from both schools. Um, so I'm not sure how a joint application is viewed mm. by, um, you know, and maybe one teacher from one school and one teacher from another school would, you know, like say if, if we're looking at the Indonesian uh, uh, app, your bridge application. Mm. That's a really good question. Um, we've definitely had it in the past and it's viewed as favourably as it would be if it was one school. Um, in fact, it's even... The oh, sorry, I just mute. Thanks. Um, it's quite a really exciting way to go about it because it means that the opportunity is spread across both schools. Um, what... Ade, Puck, Ade, would you mind keeping yourself on mute, please? Um, I think you're out and about and muting and unmuting. Um, so, Annie, in regards to the kind of way that you would go about it, I would recommend almost, could do either, working, actually, might I ask one question? The teacher that alternates between your school and another school, would that person be the key person within the partnership? And you just get an add uh, get an additional teacher from one of the other schools. Uh, it would be yeah, would that would be the key person that maybe that write the application, but maybe also the other Indonesian teacher at the school uh, that teaches more Indonesian at one particular school might be the other person. Mm, that's an absolutely perfect scenario. What I would recommend in the application, some of it is quite. Um, straightforward such as school name, school address. In the school name just say school A and school B in brackets online application. That's absolutely fine for the assessment team. And then further down for the application there's a little bit around key selection criteria where potentially the key teacher such as whoever that might be as well as if the second teacher wanted to be involved they can respond um and there'll be a place for you to put in the key details of the first teacher and you might put in brackets teacher from school one and then the second part you might say teacher from school two and then the assessment team will view it as a whole application and it means when you if you are successful and you are able to participate the two teachers from australia will be partnered with two teachers from one school in indonesia so there'll be almost almost like a three-way school partnership, which really opens up a whole array of collaboration and school areas of interest. So it's very, it's viewed very positively and it happens quite a lot for some um, regional and remote schools that we have because there's a lot of um, teacher sharing within certain kind of areas or electorates. Of course, no worries. Um, I hope that roundabout answered your answer in a Big way of saying yes, please, please do submit one. I wonder, did anybody else have any questions? You're more than welcome to use the chat. Raise your hand, unmute yourself. Um, I'll just read out one question while that happens that is a frequently asked question, which is in regards to the learning areas of teachers. So Bridge at its core is not necessarily a language exchange program. In Indonesia, for instance, we do have a lot of language teachers participate because that is where a lot of drive for the Indonesian connection for a lot of schools comes from. However, the program is delivered largely in English with about, I would say, 30 to 
left um, with Bahasa <laughs> on top. Our Indonesian um, participants have to sit an English language test in order to participate. And the reason that that's the case is because it's funded by the Australian government. So it means that, Annie, for instance, in your case, there may be one Indonesian teacher that might be slightly more confident with her Bahasa, I'm assuming a female, with their Bahasa skills versus maybe a second teacher or for anyone that's watching this offline, you may have an Indonesian teacher, but you may also have a science teacher that's really keen to do something international. Everybody, it's not um, learning area specific, everybody is welcome. And in fact, we have had in the past arts, sports teachers, leadership, um, there's a biology teacher from one of our great schools in Sunshine Beach that's neither of the teachers spoke Australian teachers spoke Bahasa when they went over. They still don't really. Um, however, the partnership has been doing um, almost maths and STEM based video conferencing and sharing pedagogical processes and resources and the students are collaborating. So that's just a fact I wanted to make quite clear. It's fantastic if there's a language, but if it's not, if there's not, that in no way detracts from the kind of collaboration and components that you may undertake in a partnership. Nicole, was there any other key points, um, maybe from some of the FAQs that were sent through in advance that you wanted to talk about? Because we'll send this recording out to everybody. Yeah, um, nothing that rings a bell that hasn't been um, covered so far, I don't think. Um, I think it's all pretty covered, but um, we are available um, if you wanted to give us a call or send us an email if you have any other questions that come to mind. Um, and we would be happy to help. Um, we realize that applications are closing this Sunday, so we will be um, as responsive as possible to make sure that uh, we answer your questions before submission date. Um, but otherwise, did anyone have any other further questions before we wrap up? Well, doesn't appear like it. What we might do um, is, say thank you to everybody for joining. I was going to phase it out today with play, uh, playing a video about Bridge, which you may have seen publicly and you're more than welcome to stay for the whole thing. You're more than welcome to watch the first part and then leave. I know it's 4.30 and you've probably taught all day, ready to get offline. Um, but please do reach out to the Bridge team. Nicole and I are always available depending on what's best suited email or phone um, but we welcome any questions there's no small questions even if it's something quite minute we're happy to support in any way and just a reminder that of course the programs will be delivered in the most safe and risk averse way possible we will not be taking anybody anywhere that does not adhere to incredibly um, stringent COVID policies that's part of how we work as well as the University of Melbourne and the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade. So there's many reporting processes. We work very closely with the states and territory departments of education. So it will be very safe. I know there's obviously some concern about that, but we continue to monitor and we really look forward to having people involved in the program. But for now, if there's no more questions, I might just share my screen if you would grant me just a moment of, um, the Bridge Program is about linking schools from different countries together in an intercultural project which is over a longer period of time. So we start with a four-day professional learning intensive course around building empathy, understanding global competency, um, and then we explore design thinking as a way of designing projects that the uh, partners can then take away and develop over the next kind of 12 months and beyond. When the school put the offer out to be part of the Bridge Program, I was really keen to build global connections. I'm looking forward to meeting my teacher, learning about other cultures, and yeah, thinking about how I can relate that to my students and help them get that understanding of what it's like to live in other countries. Today really is that first opportunity that teachers get a chance to meet one another, get to know more about each other and then create some playful and creative context to start a conversation to learn about their experiences as teachers, their experiences of schools and just the early stages of trying to work out what might their partnership 
be about. It was a good connection there. We both learned about each other really quickly. It was really great looking on Google Maps and World and seeing what his um, island was like. The Bridge program creates that context for people to develop a really great relationship between schools and between countries that often blossoms into multiple years of relationships and education collaboration. Richard is my partner teacher and I hope that uh, we'll make a very good partnership in, in building a good relationship. We're still with paper, blackboard, chalk kind of thing, so I want to know more about the technologies that we can use out here or the Australian schools use to make our teaching and learning a better experience for our kids. The major appeal for me is that while these kids are growing up in this remote rural area, expanding their global knowledge or develop their understanding and I think with that, that empathy of what people in other schools are doing and how they work and how they learn. I was so excited and visit, uh, you know, here in Australia in order to learn more, get as much information, especially the intercultural differences. We're very, very different to the school I'm from. Uh, they've, they've got about um, 400 students there. I have 12. My most sincere hope is that my kids will realise that there is a big wide world out there and the things that they do can have an impact in, in just global issues. We have the potential to get a lot out of the relationship between our school and the school in Tonga. These sorts of connections not only model to educators how to learn from one another, how to design learning together, but ultimately it equips our young people to develop the kind of intercultural skills they're going to help them to be real global citizens. Taking that next step is um, going to be really important for your country and for us and that, building that relationship. And I think, you know, if we can start that journey, you and I together, then I think that just kind of opens more doors. Looking really forward to the next few days and uh, homestay with Charlson coming around to the school, meeting everyone and um, sharing his culture and his experience with Australian students. Well, I hope that gave a bit of an idea. You'll notice that was a lot of footage from our Pacific program. But as always, um, please reach out if you have any questions. Nicole has put the application link in the chat. We look forward to hearing from you all. Have a great day. Stay safe, stay well, and uh, we'll see you hopefully very soon. Bye all. Thank you.